Welcome back. This is John Locke and today we're talking about why blogging works for SEO. Now I'm inspired uh, to make this video today by a question that I saw in an SEO forum. I go through uh, SEO forums every day looking for questions. This person, uh, they run a dental office uh, and they were saying uh, that they had tried blogging and they weren't seeing any traction, they weren't seeing any extra uh, traffic. And their question was, how does it help with uh, local SEO and how does it help with the maps? How does it help with overall SEO? Now this is a different dental office than the one yesterday, I know. This is like two in a row. Uh, we're a little off track, but I think this local SEO stuff uh, is important to talk about and so uh, I did want to touch on it. So as far as Google Maps, uh, the three pack map, that's not really going to be affected by blogging or uh, the only things that are really going to affect that are uh, the, how close you are to the actual person searching, uh, how close your business is to the center of the city, and, you know, the number of local citations, Google reviews, links to your site, uh, things, things like that. But a lot of it is going to come down to you know, are you a, a halfway decent, um, you know, local business that Google can recommend and are you close to the city center, uh, uh, you know, and are you close to the person searching? Uh, if they're searching, you know, in a city, with the city in the descriptor. So blogging doesn't help there. But where blogging does help, you're talking about trying to, to win in a competitive field and, you know, in any mid-sized city, there are a lot of dental offices. So, you know, and obviously um, it, it can be a lucrative business. So how do you win that? You know, one of the ways that you can do that, and this applies to any local business at all, it is by showing your knowledge uh, by blogging. Now, this person said that they had, um, you know, they hadn't really seen too much traffic from it. Sometimes they would send out those blogs on their Facebook and uh, they would get a few you know bits of traffic here and there but not too much. The whole goal with with the blogging thing is to get outside links, external links. Now if you're a local business and you have a basic five page you know business card site and you're just listing you know your location and your services and you know this and that you're not really going to get a whole lot of links beyond you know your social profiles, your Yelp, uh, maybe some third-party review sites, your local chamber of commerce, maybe some business directories. Outside of that, you're not going to get a lot of links. And the only way to really go out and get a bunch of links is to write content that people are going to link to. So what I have seen, and I've seen this with all different clients that I have underneath my uh, watch on my roster, and I've seen this work for people with auto repair seen this work for people with HVAC. I've seen people in healthcare that do this and it works. I've seen this, people do this in industrial machinery and it works. If you actually uh, put a lot of effort into blogging and don't look at it as something where you just put any old content out there and expect a return, but you actually treat it like a serious uh, marketing tool, then one of those blog posts is going to get some traction. Now, not, not every blog post that you put out is going to uh, be a linkable asset. Not everything that's out there is going to end up ranking, but you're not going to know until you actually put out some high quality, well-researched, in-depth content uh, on, on the things that, that you're trying to put out there. Now, the type of content that I'm talking about is not uh, blogging content that's just like uh, here's like some topic that we're putting out here because at the end of it we just really want to pitch you our services or you know some blog topic that's like here's uh, five paragraphs and then you know go hire us because that kind of content is not going to rank that kind of content is not going to draw any links what I've found is about uh, between 10 and 20 percent of the content that you produce if you're producing like uh, in-depth blog uh, content, about 10 to 20% of, of what you produce 
is going to end up being linkable assets if you're in some kind of non non marketing um, type of, of industry. So anything that's like a blue collar business, uh, service industry, or you know anything like healthcare, like what you are, um, put some effort into it. Make those blog articles like long. Make sure that they answer questions that people have. Maybe people want to know what's the best toothbrush to buy. Do a comparison of all the different toothbrushes. I don't know. Uh, you know, how do you prevent kids from getting cavities? Now that's something that's like really important. I'm sure that people, you know, research that. Maybe they're looking at page one of, of what's already up there. Uh, maybe they're looking for an article that, that talks about that and they can reference your article. These are, this is what I'm talking about with these things. You got to look at these things as from the perspective of not just we want to sell people stuff, but you know, what are people actually like looking for that, that we can educate them about. And you know, blogging, whether you're selling uh, industrial equipment, whether you're an HVAC, whether you're an auto repair shop, whether you're a dentist or a doctor or whatever. This sort of thing is going to pay off, but you have to commit to it and you have to you know, put some effort into it. Ideally, whoever's writing this on your staff, whether it's you or your staff, maybe you don't have time, maybe somebody on your staff is doing it, but put some effort into it. Don't just have like a 400 word article and expect to get results because that's not really blogging. That's just kind of putting stuff out there to put it out there. If you actually put stuff out there with the intent to educate people and help people answer questions, common questions, I guarantee you, you have heard every uh, question from your patients uh, over the course of however many years you've been practicing, 10, 20 years. I'm sure that you have a whole uh, list of the questions that people have asked or things that people say to you, people things that people email you or ask you over the phone. These are all things that could be blog posts. But like I said, the, the key to this is making sure that they have depth. Now I know that there are like plenty of dental SEO companies out there that will you know, help you with this, it'll help set up your site. If you're not seeing any traction and there's places even out there that, that will you know, uh, put effort into to doing that for you. Uh, blogging on dental topics. I'm not going to do it, but somebody else, uh, there are companies out there that specialize in it. Uh, but I would say try and write it from your own perspective, your own voice, your own experiences. Have someone on your staff help you if you don't have time or hire somebody that's actually experienced in this and have them commit so much time per month to it. That might be a good idea. Um, like I said, it's a long-term play. It's not a short-term play. If you're looking for short-term results, just spend money on AdWords. If you're looking for a long-term play and wanting to rank uh, in SEO, then look at it from a long-term perspective. Now, once you get like these blog posts up there and you get one of them that's, that's ranking and you get some of them that are actually attracting links, now what you're going to want to do is link to your service pages. Once you get like uh, a page that's got some traction, once you've got pages that uh, blog posts that are, are getting traction and they're getting links from other places, then what you're going to want to do, link to your services uh, to your homepage. Because what happens is, uh, remember, page rank flows from page to page. So when it, a third party website links to you, uh, some of that page rank splits off, flows into your site. It's like a vote uh, saying this is an important page. And so then you're going to want to link to your money page your services page for that city or for the service that you want to sell. Uh, that's how it works. So like I said, it's a long-term play. Uh, if you commit to it, it'll work. My name's John Locke. My business is Lockdown Design and SEO. Normally I'm not here talking about dental SEO two days in a row, but I found these were intriguing questions for local SEO. Normally we're talking about industrial and manufacturing SEO, but I'm here every day publishing videos. I'd love to see you subscribe. That's all I have for this video. Until next time, peace.